Wake, wake, wake up, sunshine. It's time for Simply Existing with Alex Guerrero. Play, 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 play that intro. What's up, everybody? How we doing? Welcome back to Simply Existing. We took a week off, but uh, here we are. And I say we because this is not just uh, me. This is a little team effort we got going. I produce the content and you guys listen to it. So good job. You showed up. You listen. You're you're watching. You're listening. You're, you know, doing whatever you're doing and paying attention to me. So thank you. Hope you guys are doing well out there. I'm doing quite well myself, I believe. You know, what the fuck was that? Oh, it's the ice machine. Why do ice machines make so much, like, so many weird noises? I feel like I've said that before on the pod, but, um, not to get sidetracked already, but, um, yeah, I took a week off last week, didn't put out an episode, was feeling kinda, I was starting to feel what probably would have been a, re- a really intense, like, uh, burnout, because, you know, not that, I don't know, it's just, like, I do regular things, it's not that I feel overworked or anything, but when it comes to the pod... And doing it by myself, as you know, a lot. I know a lot of people that I've seen people do this by themselves, and I'm sure they could relate. Um, yeah, when you're doing this by yourself, like I'm on my own team, on my own, you know, I set up the whole, you know, living room for this, because that's where I do this now for the most part. And um, I do all that by myself. I'm my own sound guy, my own camera guy, my own editor, and it's a lot. I gotta make the clips, actually put out the episode, come up with a caption, which I'm really slacking on my captions, I feel like, lately. Not sure, not sure, but it's it's work, it's mad work, and, uh, you know, putting out each episode, I'm already thinking, you know, for that, for that week's episode, I'm thinking about the next one. There's, like, very little time for me to actually, like, think about this episode. Like, once the episode is out, it's, like, it's out there, it's whatever. I'll just keep promoting it, putting clips, and, you know, whatever I keep doing on social media. Let me just sit up, let me adjust myself a little bit if you're watching on youtube you're probably noticing my lovely paisley cardigan but i I will talk about that in a minute um where was i yeah putting together the podcast i'm already thinking about like next week's and what i should say what i shouldn't say what i should focus less on and do differently and it's just like okay what can i because i'm always trying to learn after each episode which from the beginning i always said this is how I want to conduct it. It's a learning experience, and I'm still fresh to this. You know, it started, the, the podcast isn't even like a year old. It turns a year old this July, and, uh, you know, 30, 35 episodes in, I still can't say I'm where I want to be, although I'm very grateful for where I am. I'm glad that I've made it this far. You know, it goes without saying, you know, people don't even make it to like their episode five which I have seen, but it's 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 pretty sad because, you know, these are talented people, but, you know, for whatever reason, it just isn't, you know, right at that moment, I guess, or whatever the reason may be. And so they don't even, you know, it's just like kind of dead in the water, you know, accounts just out there and stuff just floating around. And like, I just like, I'm glad I haven't, you know, that that isn't me, you know, not to say, not to suck my own dick or anything. It's just, I'm, you know, it's not easy all the time. Like in the beginning, let me say, podcasting in the beginning for some reason was i feel like it was much easier although hard at the same time if like if that makes any sense let me elaborate like now i think my struggle is i don't know i don't want to get comfortable because in getting too comfortable i'm gonna do a lot of uh i want to avoid any bullshit you know I don't want to keep, you know, fall into a routine or a formula that just doesn't work for me. And I'm just like trying to evolve, I guess. And how I do this instead of just like, uh, you know, just like winging it like I have been or like, should I say have been like I was in the beginning a lot. There was a lot of uh, I'm sure everybody remembers the first like visual episode that how messy that was. Um, let me see, episode, I named one of the episodes off the cuff, that was like one of the early ones, it was just like straight nonsense bullshit, which is oddly one of my best episodes, but I don't know, I'm trying to be a little more coordinated, I guess a little more, I don't know, because I could only go off the cuff so much and have it work so much, I just want to be kind of prepared, but then again, I have like that kind of undiagnosed ADHD where... I just, like, 
you know, setting up the podcast even like today or like, you know, usually I just kind of forget about what I'm talking about as I'm setting up. And it's like super frustrating because then I'm just like I resort to things that I don't really, you know, not that I don't think they're worthy of discussion or anything, but they are just kind of things that are so minor to me. I wouldn't even bring them up. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Well, let me take a sip of water. <clears throat> oh my god. Um <clears throat> the fuck is that? What's that about? Should I do like uh like singers do those like uh vocal exercises? I feel like that's what I gotta do. Get my the fuck, man? Jesus Christ. Um <clears throat> La 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 uh, what's that other one? There you go, like, uh, do, re, mi. oh, do, re, mi. Yeah, I sound mad gravelly. Anyway, sound like I downed cement mix. Uh, God. Anyway. So, yeah, I'm trying to kind of just, like, grow with this podcast, because this, you know, it, I feel like even, you know, not all my episodes, like, I will admit, like, you know, my, not all my episodes, I, at least I don't deem them to be... They're definitely not all bangers. I mean, I have a few favorites, but, you know, I'm my own worst worst critic. So I'm going to, like, look at my own stuff and I'm like, gonna like, ah, shit. All right, whatever. You know, you learn, you grow, you move on, and that's how the world turns. But, you know, I'm just trying to make it better any way I can. Which, I don't know, I, that's what I thought about a lot. And so, like, you know, one of the things I learned over the break, not really learned, but I just, like, took into consideration is just, like, uh, you know, because of my undiagnosed ADHD brain, but I, I definitely have that shit. Um, like I said, setting up the podcast, I'm just like, so by the time I finish setting everything up, I just like forget what I want to talk about. And I end up talking about some shit I don't really care to talk about or to put into focus, put into light, put it into the, you know, into the world, so to speak. And um, I, I thought to myself, I'm like, all right, I really need to get like find a way to gather my thoughts. I just forget everything I want to say, and it gets super frustrating. I just, like, to the point, I'm just like, oh, God, do I even want to do the episode today? That's happened. I've had, you know, like maybe one day it'll come out. Las que no iban a salir. The ones that weren't going to come out. Kind of, like, do, like, a Patreon thing where I, like, uh, you know, you guys pay me money, and you get to see my um, unaired episodes, which there aren't many out there. There's probably, like, two I have saved. We'll see what, um... We'll see what happens with that in the future. Maybe, you know, give me supporters, damn it. Share the pod with your friends, your hot mom, the mailman, everybody. I don't, you know, no limits. There's something, I believe there truly is something for everybody in this, uh, on this uh, podcast. You know, whether it's when I talk about, you know, uh, whenever I feel my, my heritage, my Latin roots, my, you know, Spanish uh, ancestry and all that shit. Whenever I'm feeling like talking about that, you know, there's something for that's that's something a lot of people can relate to. A lot of people who listen to this pod, actually, for sure. I know that as a fact. And, um, you know, just or just like the more. Uh, I guess the more serious episodes too. the more the ones, the ones that I delve into, like myself, those deep dives on me. Those are like those are pretty heartfelt episodes. I've rewatched some of them, kind of some of them. I'm just like, what the fuck was I on about? Just kind of, you know, I'm just like, God, it's like when you, it's like when you find your old MySpace pictures in a way, you know, that whole, that whole, like, at least for me, that whole 2007, eight era where everybody was wearing like uh, colored skinny jeans. And um, for me, it was like the skinny jeans, even though I was like 200 pounds <laughs> fucking with like Nike dunks. Everybody used to wear Nike dunks when I was in school and I haven't seen them anymore. And I don't know why I think they should make a comeback in 2022 like honestly those were they had some fresh like color ways like i like i had the man maybe i could put a picture up i don't know what they're called they were just like all yellow like at the toe and everything and then when you go it's like going up it's like a navy blue i don't know how to describe i don't know i'm not really i'm really not like a sneakerhead i don't know the terminology and like i like sneakers i don't like have like a shit ton of sneakers but you know you talk sneaker to me and I'm just like, what? I, I am completely unaware of like terminology and stuff like that. I do know what dead stock means though. That, that's the, that's about the only thing I know. And like, I just, I just know that I love sneakers. I always have. I'm a little, I've toned down a little more. I'm not really, I used to wear a lot more flashy shit as a kid. Like I said, I had the yellow and navy blue Nike dunks. And I also had, I had so many pairs of dunks. 
I had the all purple. I think they were literally all purple with like a white sole and yellow laces. And I would wear those and we would get in trouble in, in elementary school. They're like, uh, you can't wear flashy sneakers. This was Catholic school. This was circa 2000. Thought I had to burp. And for those, those watching, I'm like, it looked like I was going to have a stroke, probably. I don't know. But um, anyway, back in middle school, they used to like reprimand us. They would like write us up if we were caught wearing flashy sneakers. The logic and reasoning that I understand now as an adult that I was just like, you know, as a kid, I was like, yo, fucking haters. Jesus Christ. They're just like, you know, why the hell can't they just leave us alone? And they, it was basically because, you know, not everybody is fortunate enough to be able to have sneakers like that, have clothes like that. And so they made they made a whole big thing about it, though. It was really like like they were angry at us for our style, for our, you know, choice to wear whatever we wore. And forget it. It was like, uh, I'm like, freaking the teachers would yell about it. It's just like a freaking teacher standing in the middle of the classroom yelling like a schizophrenic about our sneakers and our clothes and everything. I'm just like, seriously, like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I Although I hated everything that authority had to say back then. I still do, but, you know, back then, you're just a kid, you don't know any better, you don't, uh, although sometimes you do, sometimes, you know, sometimes, uh, you're just a little ahead of your teachers in some ways. But now, anyway, they just kind of made us, like, wear, like, generic, like, white or black sneakers from, you know, they're like, oh, go to Payless, get a blank pair of white sneakers or, uh, you know, black sneakers, whatever. And it's just like, you know, like, why ease up, number one, I don't know what it is about Catholic school, they just, like, really 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 just like we're more about like reprimanding students and discipline that was the word i was looking for not reprimanding although reprimanding yeah but they were more into the discipline than actually giving us an education let me tell you something i'll be really transparent about this i went to summer school every summer after fourth grade up until like ninth grade and it's not like i was stupid or anything i just didn't like care it's like i didn't you know it doesn't matter how much effort i showed or put in and i was the quiet kid quiet chubby kid you know didn't get bullied really i don't i don't i can't say i really had much of any experience being bullied but you know it's not easy being the chubby kid chubby quiet kid in the back of the room where you know teachers would just pick on you and all that stuff and I, like that's pretty much what it was that was my experience i was just being picked on for like no reason. It wasn't really until, like, middle school where I started to, like, kind of rebel. Like, I truly didn't give a shit. I was a fucking menace. Get kicked out every day. Go to the principal's office. To the point, like, I would, they would send me down. And they would send me back up. And I remember, I, like, I came back up one time. And I just, like, uh, I was just, like, she's, like, I, I forget what, who the teacher was. I, I'm, so I can't name drop even if I wanted to. But um, I went down. They told me just, like, go back up. I don't even think the principal was there that day or like at the moment they sent me back up and my teacher's just like i thought i told you to go to the office i'm like i did they sent me back up and me i thought i was an asshole kid i thought i thought it was just like hilarious because i don't know i just there was something about these adults where they just like thought i don't know the way adults showed discipline the way they showed authority rather the way they showed authority was just like super cringe and just super like you know even as a kid i'm laughing about it as an adult, I look back and I laugh at it. Not because, you know, I'm thinking in terms of my uh, pea-sized 12-year-old brain, but it's just truly funny. Like, imagine, like, how... Imagine being an adult. Say you are... Let's pretend you're 25 as well. You're 25 years old listening to this. Imagine you're in class, you're in elementary school, you're in your elementary school in the year, whatever it is, but you're 25 years old. You're whatever age you are now. And they're just, like, yelling at you for the most obscene shit in the most cartoonish, just outlandish animated way you know i'm talking like okay wait let me put my water down make sure it doesn't spill there they just kind of you know what no let's not let's not tempt you know trouble here okay so they're standing like arms like this to their sides and they're just yelling like pointing at your finger like i didn't have like the nuns or the teachers that like smack you with the ruler and shit but they would just like get up all in your face just like you can't be wearing your sneakers like that you can't be wearing your pants like that they, that was another big thing. That was like, um, that was like the era where everybody was sagging their pants. You know, hip hop was really popping. And so like all these rappers, like Lil Wayne, everybody, all those guys, it's just like they would wear their pants down. And so that's like what everybody would see. And like, you know, all the guys did it. And this is a Catholic school. They weren't putting up with that shit. So they started giving like demerits and stuff. 
which I don't know, like, I don't know what a demerit, even to this day, I don't know what a demerit is. They would just, like, start giving that out. And it just, like, goes on, I guess it's, like, a just, like, a little mark on your record, like, uh, you disobeyed the rules and regulations of school, Catholic school, private school, whatever you want to call it. And I, I don't know, I, I think, like, a certain amount equated to, like, a suspension, and it was just, like, so, so crazy. Stuff that I, I, I could not keep up with back then. I had no concept of school and, like, what you know, things meant. I got suspended one time in-house suspension and I'm like, all right, bet. Uh, that means I get to stay home. You know, I don't have to come into school because that's how I always saw it. Like, oh, kids got suspended in shows all the time. They just like don't, they, they're not allowed to come to school is what I thought. But I forget what I even got suspended for. And I think the people, some people I got suspended with, like actually still follow me on social media. And I forget what it is that happened, but I was like partially innocent in it. And I remember like five, six, seven of us got suspended and it was not in the privacy, the comfort of our own homes. It was in-house as in in school, in the hallway at a little table we were sitting. We were sitting at a little table then we just like got work from all our teachers, all, our, all three, four of our teachers, math, science, and like we just had busy work for the day. And so we had that in-house suspension and it was a little table outside the principal's office and I was just like, fuck, well, this isn't fun at all. And then at lunchtime, it's like our friends pass by, you know, during lunch to use the bathroom and stuff. There was like the whole line outside the bathroom, which I talked about last week. Remember the, uh, well, two weeks ago, one episode ago for, uh, you know, those following the timeline of the show. Um, there was that one nun, Sister Mary, that would just like kind of peek her head into the boys room. Like, like, si se pudiera meter, you know, entraba. If she, would, if she could, she would have gone in and just, like, you know, make sure we weren't fucking fooling around in there. And, wow, this really, this it, you know, this is a great example of an episode where I had things in mind that I just completely talk about, you know, I completely disregard it and just, like, talk about something else entirely. But we're gonna roll with it. I like it. We're, what, like, fucking 15 minutes in? Something like that? So, yeah. In-house suspension is not at all what you think it is. And I don't even know if they still do shit like that in school, to tell you the truth. I, you know, I live around a bunch of schools and every time I, I walk by like three schools on my way home and I just wonder like, do, are the things still the same? I know things are different, but how different are they? How have things changed since I was in school, in middle school, elementary school? Not so much high school. High school was like, you know, it's creeping up on a decade almost, but I still have my memories of high school for the most part. You ever, you ever got, you guys ever like think like, okay, like. Don't you guys hate when you realize, like, you're forgetting stuff about things you once, like, remembered so fondly and regularly? Like, that's how I feel about high school. I'm starting to forget everything about high school. It's like it never happened. It's like in Back to the Future. Like, it's like, if I were to describe this phenomenon, I would just, like, call it, like, the that Back to the Future effect. Where it's like he's fixing the timeline at the end. He's at the school dance and, like, everything's starting to disappear. But, like, he, you know, he fixes it kind of, sort of. We'll get into time travel stuff in another episode, but... Um, yeah, it's like kind of like that if I had to describe it any kind of way. It's like it's starting to fade until like, I don't know, maybe I go back in time sometime and like my memories will be restored. It's like <laughs> I tell my past self like, hey, it, it's like me from like 2050 goes back in time to tell me like, hey, don't smoke all that pot. Don't drink all that alcohol. Don't do this and that. All that stuff you did in your late teens, early 20s, you know, because you're, you're going to pay for it in the future. And yeah look at it It'll be like i'm already forgetting my story midway through my little not story but my little um what if what if time travel was possible i don't know i really i, I really gotta ditch the time travel shit i really you know su surprise surprise not really but i'm working you know time travel themed episode is in the works we'll we'll put it you know i can't say when exactly it's just you know it, it, when the time is right but I promise you guys won't be waiting forever for that. It's like, it's something I've been thinking about for months. But it's just things happen and, just, you know, I just like want to get the episode out every week, which I almost didn't even put out this one. I kind of just, you know, I'm just like, let me see how I feel. Because, you know, like, I'm just like kind of, you know, thoughts, things are going good. It's just my thoughts are kind of clouded. It's just like a lot of stuff on my mind right now. And I just kind of want to, you know, I, I do want to continue doing the podcast, though. That's the one thing I want to stay consistent with. I really can't handle time off like that because it, it's like, it's not like I was doing anything else, really. Really, I w truly was not doing anything else in this uh, 
little week off that I had. You know, I still did my regular thing. I did, you know, I went to work, went to school, did what I had to do. And yeah, that's it. I mean, I do look forward to like posting the clips every week, posting, you know, uploading the actual episode on YouTube and all that stuff. And, you know, it's weird because I created this as an outlet and here I am. Let me take a break from this outlet and then I have nothing to do. I have no other outlet to kind of release whatever, you know, uh, just therapeutically talk to myself and to you people listening or watching and I, it's just like what do i do i didn't watch any new shows even though moon knight did uh drop like two weeks ago at this point by the time this comes out so happy happy moon knight and simply existing wednesday um <laughs> maybe i'll incorporate that into like some promo material or something i don't know we'll see i have yet to watch moon knight though this is my point but i heard it's pretty good i've heard good things about it so far and i yeah, I haven't watched the show, but I pre-ordered the pop figures already, which where I'm going to put those, I have no idea. It's just um, madness in terms of my pop collection. It's I have them all. I had to get a bin actually recently at Target. I went after class one day and I just bought the biggest bin I could find. And I just put a bunch of older ones, like like some old, old ones, like maybe even as old as like 2000. 13 which you know that's like barely, that's barely a decade ago but I put up like some old ones point blank into a bin to make room on the shelf for all the new ones all the pre-orders that I forgot about all the ones that I just like spontaneously buy it's just too much too much and you know me and the boys always talk about like we gotta fucking win the lottery and buy a mansion just a big ass house where we each have like our own section we put our shit and you know just we buy more stuff and fill up the house until we buy, you know, we get rich enough to we win the lottery again to buy another house and put more stuff in there. Because, like, I see these TikToks account, man, and, like, they really just blow my mind. You know, a lot of Marvel fanatics, a lot of Star Wars fanatics, and just, like, comic books in general. They've got a little bit from everything, every uh, franchise, and it's, like, great. A lot, of my, a lot of my favorites seem to be, like, the horror ones. That's, at least that's what uh, comes up in my For You page. But... A lot of the horror stuff, I want to get more into, like, the horror stuff, more horror, like, uh, figurines, more, uh, like, uh, I guess, like, yeah, just the figurines. And, like, the Steelbook DVDs, uh, that's another thing, which I just got Spider-Man No Way Home. The, the Steelbook is just gorgeous. I've been waiting months for it. I ordered, I pre-ordered it back in, like, December. I remember, I think I saw it go up for pre-order, like, what, like around the time I saw it in theaters. And I just had to have it. And it's finally here. I don't know when I'm going to watch it. Wanted to watch it tonight or something, but I don't have the energy for that. I'm kind of just like, I'm so fucked up. It's like, it, it was my sister's birthday this past weekend. And, you know, I drank a lot. I ate a lot. So much pasta. So much alcohol. And, you know, it was a nice little thing. No, nothing crazy. It's just like, you know, we just don't know how to act. We just like, <laughs> you know, Latinos throw a party and we got to go all out. It's like when they throw the parties for the... uh you know, the baby that just turned two years old and you got the drunk deals and everybody, they got like fucking cases of beer and it's like everybody's fucked up. It's a party for the adults, truly. But this is the reason we're putting it under, you know, just like, oh, baby turned two. Yeah, time to turn up. That kind of thing. And so I realized truly like how far my alcohol consumption has changed over the last couple of years, because 25 year old me now could definitely not keep up with 20 21 year old me 21 year old me legal drinking age you know all that stuff i truly cannot keep up two beers in on saturday and i felt like i was gonna die i was starting to get that fucking headache right here and i get migraines and stuff and it was like nice and it was like nice day nice and cool nice and breezy but it looked like you know it was raining that day a little bit so the sky was kind of pale white and that shit gives me headaches i'm sure i've said it before on the pod i don't know if i haven't you know, the light like that gives me insane migraines. So pair that with drinking alcohol and just like all this movement and, you know, it's just I can't I can't keep up. I'm just not built like I was a couple of years back. It's crazy. It's crazy. Even like I don't really drink by myself, but when I drink by myself, I'm much more paced. You know, I, I pace myself much more. And I'm just like, fuck, well, cause odds are I'm like drinking on like a Tuesday. I'm like, ah, I gotta go to work or I gotta go to class, whatever. And you know, I can't be fucked up to like do what I gotta do. Cause once that headache sets in, forget it. I'm just like, I'm done. I'm out of commission. I remember when I was like 21, 
It was like one of the first like real nights out that I had. And I came home the next day. I came home pretty much the next day. Hungover, headache, throwing up. And it was just torture. Torture. I, I do not miss those days. And it's like I get this I get that same kind of hangover now. Forget it. I, I would probably have to like call out of work or something. There's no way I'm surviving. And like sleeping it off used to help, but not anymore. Sleeping it off is just not an option at this point. It's either, you know, I really gotta like drink water as I'm drinking everything else, or I gotta like take an Advil. Like as soon as I wake up and even put Vix, honestly. Vix, let me say, Vix, I, I get the hype behind Vix with Hispanics. That shit takes care of everything. Gets rid of my... It's the only thing. No pill works for my headaches. As bad as they get, you know, sleeping it off doesn't help, like I said. And Vix is the only thing that works for me, truly. Truly. It's just like I take a big fucking glob and I'm just like, yeah, that's it. Put it all over and that's it. You just sit there. You know, put the fan on, lay down. I'm like this. Tronca. And I'm like feeling much myself, much more myself by the time, like, you know, like maybe 45 minutes, an hour goes by. And yeah, thank God for Vix. That's really it. That's all she wrote. Fucking Vix. Lord, what are we running into here? Almost half an hour, pretty much. Once I edit out my pauses. Do I got to say that every time? Not really, no. But man, let me just say Apple products are kind of fucking shitty. My Mac is just like kind of, I almost didn't set up today for this episode. I don't know if anybody could shed light on this, but I'm having issues with my 2017 MacBook Pro. It's like, I don't know how, how or when this started, but sometimes when I start up my computer, it's like the keyboard and the trackpad become unresponsive, irresponsive, whatever. They're not responding. I can't log in. I can't do anything. Can't click. Can't even boot up in safe mode or recovery mode because the keyboard isn't working. I gotta use an external fucking keyboard that I have right here. But it's cool though, because like I can uh I can put my computer screen onto the TV and then I could just like see everything and have the keyboard here. So that's pretty cool. Kind of innovating the whole uh you know podcast host slash podcast producer kind of, you know, thing. Trying to do it all at once. I could sit here like this actually if I really wanted to. But I don't, I don't know, it's kind of pretentious to me. I don't know, I don't want to sit, I don't want to like review this footage and just kind of see myself like this, you know, like, I'm like a, what are, what, are, what are those people called in court that they kind of like sit there and like they uh, type out everything that's being said? Court reporter, something like that. Alexa, what, what does a court reporter do? Job responsibilities for court reporters include Use verbatim methods and equipment to capture, store, retrieve, and transcribe pretrial and trial proceedings or other information. Include standard captioners who operate computerized stenographic captioning equipment to provide captions of live or pre-recorded broadcasts for hearing impaired viewers. Court Reporter is a career where there are currently 17,700 U.S. employees, making $56,940 U.S. dollars on average. Maybe that's what I want to do when I grow up, huh? Mmm, I kind of like the sound of that. It sounds fun. I didn't hear the pay. She just kind of like lost me at a certain point. It just kind of went over my head. But that sounds like fun. No, we want to be court reporters. It sounds like a lot of fun. It's what it seems like up my alley. I'm a communications major after all. I'm a communications major that has no idea what fucking career, what job he wants. And like, honestly, you know, I'm figuring it out. You know, but it's just like there's so much shit out there. It's like I'll worry about that when the time comes, once I graduate, which hopefully I'll get that done soon because uh, I'm tired of fucking school. Although I got to say during these, uh, you know, the the end of these COVID times, it's nice to like, get, you know, be able to go out to class at least, you know, at least I have that. I don't like I said, I always say like I don't really go out much, especially like when school is going on. But like, it's just nice not to be in the house, you know, as opposed to, you know, this time last year even i was still taking online classes and it, you know it's just not not the same you know for the, there's the thing that like you know there's a, there's that thing that like you don't learn as best as you could like online at least for me that's the case you know and i didn't learn shit online but you know i'm much better in person i like you know i feel like i'm more focused in a room full of people i'm more aware is that the heat going up and hissing jesus christ 
good good thing we're running in at like 30 minutes or something we could actually wrap up here but you know i, I like like let me just finish my point about school it's like i you know as much as i don't really love commuting i just like being able to like do shit that i once did you know that's the beauty of like this covid shit ending which i think i I don't know if you guys have seen, like, uh, Hong Kong or wherever it is. I think somewhere in China, they're, like, all fucked up. They're, like, a million times worse than they were in March 2020. But, you know, things are, I guess, looking up here, you know, in the States. Let's let's hope it stays that way. Let's keep it that way. Because I, uh, you know, pff, that's it. I don't know if I can do another lockdown. Seriously, it's just, I don't know. At that point, I just, like throw away everything I thought I knew about COVID and this whole experience. But anyway, guys, <laughs> it's just like, I got a little like serious. I got a little like, you know, like, like impending doom feeling of impending doom, but uh, I don't know. Let's wrap it up. That's it. Let's let, let's end on a happy note. Thanks to thank, thank you guys for listening and watching. Um, forget what I said about COVID COVID's it's gone. It's, it's, it's actually, no, I can get in trouble for that. I could get taken down from YouTube for saying that, even though it was just a joke. COVID ain't over, but be safe out there. Um, did I, t- I tell you guys before to listen to the to share with the podcast and all that stuff? I think I did. I don't know. My my brain is fried. I need the future version of myself to come and tell me don't smoke all that pot you did. And yeah, you'll be able to remember what the fuck you're saying on your podcast, you fucking asshole. This has been episode 35. See you guys next week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you guys. Bye.